Hey G fans, last week I put together a video including 10 reasons on why any Godzilla fan, or anyone looking to become a Godzilla fan, needs to watch the Showa era films. Today, it's time to take a look at the second era of the Godzilla franchise with 10 reasons of why you need to watch the Heisei era. The era would jumpstart the Godzilla franchise with the return of Godzilla or Godzilla 1985 as it's known in the US. The first entry into the Heisei era brought Godzilla back to the big screen with a serious tone that harkened back to the original Gojira. The American version would even bring back screen veteran Raymond Burr in order to reprise his role from the original Godzilla King of the Monsters. The movie would pit Godzilla against Man without a major kaiju villain, although it would introduce the famous Super X anti-Godzilla weapon. The Heisei era was the second largest era in the Godzilla franchise, spanning over a time frame of 11 years from 1984 to 1995, including seven Godzilla films along with three solo Rebirth of Mothra films. New Kaiju This era would bring us some of the most popular Godzilla Kaiju in the franchise. Many fans consider Biollante to not only be one of their favorite Kaiju, but to be one of their favorite films of this era. Along with the enormous plant hybrid Biollante, we also got Batra, an evil version of Mothra, Godzilla's doppelganger in Space Godzilla, and perhaps Godzilla's greatest foe yet in Destoroyah. King Ghidorah makes its return larger than ever, and the kaiju would later get a fan favorite mecha makeover as Mecha King Ghidorah. Even Rodan and Mecha Godzilla would see massive upgrades as Fire Rodan and the Garuda assisted Super Mecha Godzilla. Speaking of giant robots, the series would even see the return of lesser known Mogera in order to help turn the tide against the evil space Godzilla. More ranged attacks. If you're a fan of melee attacks and monster wrestling, then go look at the Showa era. The directors in this era focused on ranged attacks in order to get a more non-human feel to its monsters. So if you're looking for ranged attacks and breath attacks to no end, then look no further than the Heisei era. A much better younger version of Godzilla. With the Showa era, all we had for a younger Godzilla was Minya or Manila, a mix of Godzilla and the Pillsbury Doughboy. Here in the Heisei era, not only do we get a much better looking baby kaiju, but this time we get to see it grow up as well. It starts off as baby Godzilla, then grows into little Godzilla, which is almost like an updated Minya, later becoming more like G with Godzilla Jr., and eventually a full grown monster as Godzilla Rebirth. It really is too bad that the Godzilla Jr. Rebirth era didn't take place after the Heisei era. Huge Kaiju Godzilla and the other monsters of this era were enormous when compared to the Kaiju of the Showa era. The Big G would grow from a standard 50 meter height in the Showa era up to a staggering 100 meter height. Even with Godzilla being this large, he would have to face off against a 120 meter tall version of Biollante, a 140 meter tall King Ghidorah, and a breathtaking 120 meter tall Destoroyah. Flying Kaiju Almost every monster or enemy in the Heisei era had some way of taking to the skies. We have Super X in the return of Godzilla, Biollante, at least when it dispersed, King Ghidorah, Mothra, Batra, Mecha G, and Destoroya. Even Space Godzilla had a flying form. Updated Kaiju suits and new special effects. Not only did the suits in this era get much better looking, but the suits were also lighter weight, allowing for more movement, giving us better and more realistic fight scenes. And along with that lighter weight came bigger monsters. A whole new era with an original beginning. With the Heisei era, the franchise would see a reboot, keeping all the show era films except for the original Gojira out of the Heisei era's timeline. Most Godzilla fans will admit that the first Gojira film is a masterpiece classic, so many fans will enjoy the fact that this film stays in canon in this era, while the other films stay in an alternate timeline, allowing for new looks on classic movies such as Godzilla vs. Mothra and Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. A darker, more serious tone. The Showa era started off serious and tried to end off on a serious note, but the middle of the era was heavily aimed at younger viewers. With the Heisei era, the franchise kept its younger fans in mind, especially with the Rebirth of Mothra series, while focusing more on the older viewers with the Godzilla films. This era would even see the deaths of Godzilla and Godzilla Jr., if only temporary. 
OPG. This era was home to some of the most powerful Godzillas to ever walk the earth. The standard Heisei Godzilla was way overpowered when looking at the Showa era's Godzilla. The Big G would start off the era at 80 meters tall, eventually growing to 100 meters tall after feeding on a nuclear submarine. This would make the Heisei version twice the size of the Showa era G. As if all of this power wasn't enough, we also get the supercharged Godzilla from Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, and we end the series on burning Godzilla, an insanely overpowered yet unstable Godzilla. So if you want to see Godzilla at double the size and double the strength, look no further than the Heisei era. So where do you guys sit on the first two eras? Are you a Heisei fan or are you a Showa fan? To me, there are no bad Godzilla eras. I love both for different reasons. I'd love to hear the reasons why you love or hate the Heisei era down in the comments. If you're new to the channel and you're a fan of the Godzilla franchise or the Alien franchise, why not subscribe and turn on those notifications to get my content as soon as it drops. So check there to get the latest news and updates. Thanks again for all your shares, likes, subs, and comments. Your support is greatly appreciated and helps direct future content. Take care G fans, have a good one, and I hope to see you next time.